Dit programma wordt mede mogelijk gemaakt door het International Film Festival Rotterdam. Welkom bij de 44e editie van het International Film Festival Rotterdam. De komende tien dagen de filmhoofdstad van de wereld. In de bioscopen rond het Schouwburgplein, de Westblaak en de Wilhelmina Pier worden honderden films van over de hele wereld vertoond. In het komende programma Big Talk spreekt Hans Maarten van der Brink iedere avond in het oude Luxor met een belangrijke gast van het filmfestival. En vanavond is dat James Napier Robertson uit Nieuw-Zeeland over zijn film The Dark Horse, het waargebeurde verhaal van Genesis Potini die met schaken probeert het leven van kinderen te veranderen. Mijn naam is Genesis Potini. En ik wil je leiden. For the National Chess Championships in six weeks' time. <sighs> Jim, what are you doing? I can help them. They'll have a purpose. You talk dreams to those tamarikis, you better follow through. Take your meds, get your sleep, whatever. Just promise me, you won't let them down. Welcome. <laughs> Can I call you James? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You may call me James, yes. Okay. Welcome to Rotterdam, your first time, I believe. It is, yes. Yeah. It is my, um, my first time here, but uh, so far it's been... And already incredible. sold out. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, fantastic. That was a bit silly of me, the thing about the Power Rangers. Right. Because cool. <laughs> um, you were quite young when you did that, and it was silly because you, you actually started acting when you were much, much younger than that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes. I've had a, um, a, 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 a long and interesting um, uh, uh, career, but... In acting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, for me, um, in the end, acting wasn't really uh, the thing that I, uh, I felt drawn to, uh, in a way. What was um, the film you, uh, you acted in when you were three? And uh, yeah, um, uh, Mad Max, yeah, yeah. Beyond the Thunderdome, yeah. yeah. Brings back so much memories. Yeah. And it, it, it must have been method acting then for you, because, you know, living and, and not playing the role, because yeah. when you're three, you don't really make a difference between what's real and what's fiction. Is yeah, it, yeah, yeah, that's right. Do you have right. any recollections of it? No. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thought so. Uh, yeah. But you, you did go on uh, um, uh, as an actor in, in, uh, in both television, film, and theater. Mm -hmm. and at a very still young age, you gave up. Is that final? Yeah, I mean, I changed think... changed into uh, directing. If I was if I was going to act again, um, it would probably be uh, you know doing something on stage um, because that was the uh, yeah. We I have mean, that for you. Yeah. I actually I, I I had a um a beautiful moment just before wandering around backstage mm -hmm. and kind of like you know absorbing the 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 nostalgia. Um, and also having just seen Birdman recently, yeah. that's uh, a very evocative uh, film about theatre. So, um, but no... So uh, we, we yeah. should have thought up a play a, but I should with have done a picnic a monologue table. Right yeah, now, yeah, right. yeah, that's right, that's right, yeah. But no, act, yeah. acting in film and, uh, and television wasn't so satisfactory for you? No, um, you know, I think, uh, I, think I, can, I can better serve other actors um, by... Uh, uh, watching them from behind a camera and trying to uh, help. Yeah. What is so unsatisfactory then about? Well, it's tricky because if I if I sit here and I talk about what I found unsatisfying as an actor, it, there's almost no way of saying it without slightly running down other actors. I don't who think there I are any am, actors in the in the audience. Well, you, right? um, yeah. You never know. Okay. Yeah. Um, and of course, for me as a director, I'm so reliant on actors. So um, 
you know, uh, yeah. But, but I, I think um, there's a tricky thing as an actor, you kind of, you don't get to see a process through, really. You, you, um, you, you show up and you have to do something, you can't see what you're doing, you're reliant on a script and on a director, uh, then it's got to go off and be edited so you won't see what you've done for uh, quite a long time. And then you will uh, have to um, uh, sort of come back and watch it like six months later and you can't even remember what, uh, what, what you did. So um, I I'm, I'm, was drawn quite quickly to trying to be there at the beginning of the process and at the end. You feel like a, a pawn in somebody else's game? Or sort of a chess piece that's... I think I've heard, I heard, I think it was Viggo Mortensen who said you're a, a, a colour on the palette of the, uh, of the painting. So, um, which, which is, is, is true. But was it uh, actually a conscious decision? Okay, I'm going to stop this. Yeah. And, and... As soon as I was able to get a film up that I could make, yeah. then yes, I very happily segued into that. Because this is your second feature film. That's correct. Tell us about the first one. You, you started that... Yeah. Um, in Just the, like I, that? <laughs> I'm going to make a film? I hope this is of interest to everyone out there. It's, um, so far, you're doing great. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, um, because uh, you're all sort of here to see um, uh, the Dark Horse. We'll, we'll um, get to that. Don't yeah. worry. Um, <laughs> so the, uh, the first film that I made was a very low-budget film. I had read about uh, how the Coen brothers had raised the money for their first yeah. film, Blood Simple, by... Um, shooting a, a teaser, essentially. So they hadn't actually made the film. Mm -hmm. uh, they kind of created a would-be trailer, then they went in the phone book under D for dentist, because they figured that dentists have money, and called them up and said, do you want to be a producer on a film? And uh, tried to sort of bargain their way into as many people's lounges as possible, put a projector up, screen their teaser, and then turn to them and kind of and this is money. how you made your first feature? Well, that's how they made their first feature. Yeah. Um, they raised $750,000 like that. Yeah. And I thought, well, if they can do that, then uh, the least I could do is try and raise uh, a quarter of that to, to try and make a film. Um, so I did that with my uh, producer, uh, a very talented guy, Tom, who is the producer on The Dark Horse as well. Mm -hmm. um, and we raised a small amount of money. Uh, we got a bunch of actors that I knew in New Zealand, and we essentially, I wrote it like a stage play about um, uh, a, a guy who's an author who starts to feel like he's losing his mind and uh, believes that he might have been behind someone being murdered, but he can't remember, um, and he's trying we to work We won't out. spoil that s uh, film story either. <laughs> yeah. But you succeeded in, in making the first film practically from scratch? Yes. Um, uh, it is a, a thriller, yes. we may say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. well, a psychological. And then, and then yeah. for the second film, The Dark Horse, which we're about to yeah. see, um, it's a completely different story. Well, this, is, this film is about um, a, 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 very, a man who was a very dear friend of mine, um, Genesis Portini, who is a... Uh, he, he was a New Zealander, um, a Māori New Zealander, which is our native people in New Zealand. And he... Uh, was an extremely brilliant chess player, uh, particularly speed chess, but he also uh, suffered from uh, severe bipolar. And so what we're about to see is based on a true story, and I was going uh, yeah. to ask how did you stumble on the true story, but you actually knew the main character. I did, I did, I played many games of chess with him. You're um, a chess player yourself? I, I am, yes, and I lost nearly every single one of them. So <laughs> I managed to win one game, which for me felt like a phenomenal achievement, and I think it was literally that I just fatigued him through sheer mass of games, so... And youthful energy. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah just yeah. blustering and blundering my isn't, way forward. Isn't that... Um, I can imagine it's more difficult to make um, a, a film based on a true story if you know and have a personal relationship with, uh, with the main character than if it's just an interesting story that's being given it's to you. It's the first time because that I've... you have I've to change stuff. Yeah, it's the first time that I've made uh, a film about... Uh, real people in mm. a real uh, situation and it meant that I had to approach it in a completely different way because this is going to be, uh, particularly when Genesis, um, you know, uh, this is going to be their life story up on the screen and that's quite a dangerous thing in a way because uh, if I don't do it with respect and integrity, uh, then there could be something quite damaging for them as people that uh, would be seen in a lot of ways as fact. 
Who, who is them as people in this? In, in, because uh, uh, Genesis, the main character, mm -hmm. uh, passed away a couple of years ago. He did, yes. So he, he never saw the movie. No. But some of the other characters or the, the people on, on whom the characters were, were based on did go yeah. to the premiere. Yeah, um, that was uh, probably the hardest moment for me in the, the, the making of this film was when Jen passed away. Um, and it would have been the, the moment, the one moment where I didn't know if I could actually uh, do it. Um, but uh, I remember sitting at his funeral and um, uh, it was in this huge hall and it was overflowing with people uh, and principals were bringing in groups of school kids to talk about how much he changed their lives and uh, there were videos being sent in from young men in their 20s or 30s who are now living overseas and you know having done incredible stuff with their lives and talking about how much uh, Jen had helped them stay off the wrong path and uh, it was quite a, a tough moment because, you know, I, I realized that this film would be his legacy. And so you felt not only an artistic responsibility, so to speak, but also sort of... Not, not even an artistic responsibility, but an no, emotional... But more, than, more than that. Yeah, I mean, a yeah. personal responsibility, yeah. an emotional... Because, of course, you want to make a good film. Uh, yeah, but, you know, as I say, if it felt like it was going to disrespect him in any way, then I would have rather have not made it. So mm -hmm. I had to... Um, really think about it for a while and but in the end it felt like you know I had to make this film because I had to to, to, to share his story with as many people as I was able to um, and uh, the real noble and the real Jedi who are characters in the film that you'll get to see soon um, uh, they were with us all the way along to always make sure that we were uh, telling the story with as much authenticity as as possible Okay. Mm. Could you point out one main thing you had to you had to uh, change in, in the uh, in the story because of the demands that a film uh, makes? Gosh, it's an interesting concept talking about a film before people have seen it. It's sort of yeah, yeah, yeah. What I'd like to talk about is the ending so of the film. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, we won't give away the, the <laughs> surprise ending. Yeah. Um, uh, Look, I think the tr I tell us that something we're not the, going to the, see. Yeah, the, the hardest thing really is um, uh, condensing a, a man's life and condensing um, uh, uh, a story such as this into two hours. That's a real challenge. You know, I found that really hard. Um, and uh, whilst you know, actually uh, trying to accurately portray it, so. I was thinking, for instance, of you know, you have him talking to you, to to uh, to himself, quite a lot, and writing that, uh, and, and knowing or having the burden. Uh, of, well, I'm, I'm I'm just writing his words now, but maybe his words were completely different. Or I. I well, I think as a writer, you know, your job is to try and interpret um, uh, a person's thoughts as accurately as you can, and you know, inevitably there will be times where you can't. Um, get it exactly how they would say it, but if it's got th the same uh, context or emotional truth to it, then I think that's the best you can try and strive for. Okay. I, I, I saw the movie, um, um, among other things, as a sort of clash of three cultures um, or three con concepts, two of which we sort of know. One is um, that there's a, um, um, uh, an element is a sort of motorcycle gang, uh, mm. thugs who have their own ethics uh, and initiation um, uh, rights. Mm -hmm. um, there's also the, maybe the moral, and you say it, it, it was, that's real true to life, mm -hmm. of um, if you put enough dedication into something and enough effort, you can be anything or, or almost anything you want to. We've seen that, experienced that. But the third thing is, is rather, is, I think for this audience is rather Strange. That's the mixture of chess culture, which is basically a, a Persian war game, mm -hmm. and um, the mystic or the myths of um, the Maori people, mm -hmm. with a lot of uh, words and expressions we don't know. Mm -hmm. um, could you m maybe explain a bit more of them, of them, the role in uh, of the Maori in uh, New Zealand society now? 
Is it, is it a, a subgroup or is it a real part of New Zealand culture? So the Māori people in New Zealand, the Māori culture, um, is, is our, uh, they're our indigenous people, our native people. They were there before uh, uh, Europeans um, who are called Pākehā um, in New Zealand. And a lot of our culture really comes from Māori culture. Uh, so, um, but there has been, um, there are, and, and this is certainly not right throughout Māori culture, but there is definitely an aspect of um, problems with gangs and, um, uh, you know, uh, poverty. And I think that in, in, a, in, in a situation like that, um, uh, someone like Genesis is kind of like a shining light. And he's one of those people who, I think there are people like this all over the place, but we just don't hear about them. They're sort of the unsung hero. And uh, what this was an opportunity to do was to really kind of actually shine that light on him and put him on the stage that, that he never normally would have been put on. And, uh, you know, because he was actually um, uh, a leader of, of his community, mm -hmm. but he was also um, stigmatized because of uh, his, his mental health and, yeah. and his struggles with that. And this was are, a... Are these people as a group also stigmatized? No. No, but there's, there are definitely, um, you know... Um, there's somebody saying right in the beginning of the film, uh, um, go on the dole and get a life, you know, that sort of, uh, oh, they're, they're good for nothing. Yeah, I think it's that if you're really that low, then yeah. there's a stepping stone to is kind the dole, of getting yeah. your life on, okay. on track, and the first thing is maybe yeah. get money from somewhere. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But do, do you feel, as a New Zealander, uh, that their culture... The, the, the native culture is part of you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all these words and expressions, a New Zealand audience would e recognize them and relate to them? Yeah, predominantly, yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. For the film, you, um, you used a, um, a, a mixture of uh, professional actors, and I think uh, Cliff Curtis uh, stands out, um, and, and, and amateurs. Yeah. Um, There's a lot of actors in the film who have never acted before in their life. Um, including some of the really key roles. And uh, also a lot of the, the gang members in the film are real gang members. Mm -hmm. um, and they're actually from different gangs. So uh, there was a little bit of concern that if we have them on set <laughs> at the same time, that um, you know, fiction might become reality. Uh, and I definitely... So was it very tightly scripted or uh, quite the other way around? Oh, no, yeah, it's, it's tightly scripted, but... Um, you know, uh, so I definitely had times where there were quite a few people that thought I was insane for um, casting certain people in the film. But as I say, for me, the most important thing all along was authenticity. You know, it was so uh, crucial that, uh, you know, the last thing I wanted to do was make a film that, that had any kind of um, vacuous or, or Hollywood representation of, of a gang member or of, uh, you know, uh, any, any of the characters in the film. So I was prepared to take those risks. Um, and Aren't gang, gang members inclined to play a role like uh, they think they should in a film? Or? How, how do you mean, <laughs> sorry? Well, you're a gang member, think I'm, I'm on film now, now I'm going to well, the overact. Funny thing, the, the funny yeah. thing is, yeah, for most <laughs> real gang members, when you put a camera on them, they get really shy. They get shy? Yeah, because yeah, oh. yeah, it's sort of like, and they'll suddenly get quite self-conscious, and so, you kind of have to do like workshops to sort of like let's relax and just breathe out and you know. Um, and the other interesting thing is that for a lot of um, members of a gang, uh, a lot of uh, what is, is, is important growing up in a gang is to be very stoic, to, to kind of be poker faced. You don't want to give away emotion because that's kind of like a sign of, of weakness. So there's a, there's a very kind of um, uh, uh, tight control on revealing any emotion. Of course, then, when you need an actor on camera to reveal emotion, um, that kind of poses a whole new set of, uh, of challenges. But nobody was protesting, hey, this is not like, it's, like it is in real life. No, in fact, they were all um, quite blown away by, I mean, all of the, 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 the uh, gang uh, uh, clothing in the film is, is authentic. You know, it's, it's done by the, gu the, the guys that actually make all of the prominent gangs in New Zealand, their, their patches and... Everything. So, in fact, I think people were often getting quite disturbed at how real it was feeling, <laughs> um, which for me was fantastic. 
Uh, they had the idea yeah. that you saw through them. Uh, not that I saw through them, but I think that I, I saw them and that I was trying to depict them with, uh, again, as much uh, truth as I was able to. Yeah. Maybe a, a last um, question, because um, I think by now everybody's anxious to see the film, yeah, sure. uh, is, is about the chess. Um, <laughs> It's about the chess. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't really uh, uh, strike me as a, a, a sport or a game that is uh, very suitable for film. No, I remember when I um, first started trying to get this film off the ground and being told repeatedly that chess is the least cinematic thing you could choose. Yeah. Um, to which I would always answer, but that it's not a chess movie. You know, it's yeah. it's uh, you know just as it's not a bipolar movie or it's not a gang movie. It's these are aspects of the story that we're telling. But people but, who are um, knowledgeable about chess aren't protesting about the way it's depicted. No, all the moves are. Because I'd always, I, you know, I'd 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 um, <laughs> I'd known um, you know um, with the Seventh Seal, yeah, uh, the the Bergman, Bergman film yeah. and, and the game of chess with death. Uh, people picked that game apart because the moves were inconsistent and they weren't, you know, actually accurate. So I was really determined to try and not fall prey to the same dangers. Uh, so we were very, uh, very careful to, to make sure it was all done properly. Okay. I think on that note, yes. everybody's really anxious. Yes. Give them a, another great round of applause. Thank you. Thank Ladies you. and gentlemen, in a few minutes, the Dutch premiere of The Dark Horse. Thank you. Thank you. De nachtfilm die we draaien heet Mundo Grua van de Argentijnse regisseur Trapero. Over de klusjesman Pablo die zijn droombaan als kraandrijver aan zijn neus voorbij ziet gaan. Dit programma werd mede mogelijk gemaakt door het International Film Festival Rotterdam.